Hello everyone, this is Prem Kumar and welcome to this last lecture on Pega session management. In this lecture, again this is going to be interesting lecture, we are going to talk about something called queuing the session. Queues, I call it as queues, I don't know how you call it or how you pronunciate it but the spelling which you can see already, that's what I'm going to talk about. So normally when do you use this queuing the session? This is used when you want to do some kind of restart. For example, rolling restart Pega by default does this, like it queues the sessions and then it does the rolling restart. So what is this queuing exactly meant and why do we need to do it during the server restart? Pega has a very good diagram through which you can entirely understand about this queuing. So I'm going to bit by bit explain this picture. Just the participants for this queuing process is client. So client is like a browser, a requester session. So you can have 100, 200 requesters logging into your Pega application. So they can be the clients or the requesters. And then you have the load balancer in between because when you have some cluster for sure, you need to have a load balancer in the middle. So that is going to route the traffic to different servers that is at the back end. So load balancer will be more like a front end and you will be hitting the load balancer URL. So load balancer will be another participant and then the nodes. So nodes can be different nodes. For now, you see two nodes, one on the third column and node two is on the last column. So two nodes are available into the cluster. And then you also have HA manager. HA refers to high availability. And when you talk about cluster, high availability is very critical. We already briefly talked about that into, I think two modules before on the cluster management. Cluster management helps with high availability, right? Because you have different servers running and if one server goes down, you can queues, you can continue the session into the next server. So high availability will always be maintained. And then you also have some access groups through which you can act like a high availability manager. So you can control, you can start the queues process and everything. So high availability manager is another participant. And then you have passivation store. What is this passivation store? We saw it during the passivation lecture. So passivation or data can be passivated at two place, one into the DB, other into the file system. So passivation store is also a participant and finally a node. So six participants are available. And if you look this picture, there are four stages which I marked on the other side. First is the pre queues request. And then when queues begins, what happens? When post queues request, what happens? Let's say if the node is removed and if the load balancer updates that, then what happens? I'm going to show you everything in a detail because this may be a bit difficult for you to read through. At least with my specs, it was very difficult. So I'm going to show you in four different ways. First is on the pre queues request. So before queuing, normal request. So this is like a normal request when a server is running perfectly fine. So a client needs to access some web pages or something he needs to do on the server. So he makes an interaction. He makes a HTTP request. He's hitting the load balancer URL. So that is the first arrow. And load balancer URL, what it does, it sends the request to the node one. Server response. So node refers to server, server response, and then we get the response. So that's, those are the four arrows, right? So this is like a normal HTTP request with the load balancer in place. Okay. Now, when queues begins, what happens is HA manager or the high availability manager, he can trigger the queuing process. Maybe he restarts the server. Maybe he brings the server down. Maybe he used the API call to start the queues process. So there are different situations applicable through which a HA manager can start the queue process. So now let's say this is triggered. A queues process is triggered for the node one. So it means you are going to bring the node one down. So the state of the node queue state begins and as soon as queue state begins, what it does is it does the passivation. So that is why I explained that lecture long before. So passivation, you definitely know passivation can occur at multiple times when there is a timeout or if some sessions are idle, it's going to passivate, remove the data from memory and put it into some DB or file system so that it can be recovered again or can be activated again. Similarly, queues process also what it does is because most of the users will be actively using the applications, right? So they will have or they will be using the memory in memory and in memory when you restart, it will be gone. Like totally your data will be cleared, your clipboard pages, all those pages, threads, browser, requests, everything will be cleared, which you really don't want to do if you purposefully want to bring the servers down during the maintenance. So what you can do, you can trigger the queues and queues what it does is it passivates the requesters. It means all those pages, the requesters will be moved to the passivation store. Let's consider it as a database. So passivate requesters. 
everything is passivated into the database and this is the process of queuing so queuing and passivation interlink sorry this looks a little weird but queuing and passivation both are kind of interlinked so when you begin queues it means you are going to passivate all the sessions be it idle be it active whatever sessions in the server you are going to passivate the data so that the data is not lost it can be activated back into a different node so once everything is passivated the queues process ends and then the next step post queues request okay now let's say the same client you see client 1 the same client is making another request after queues process is completed to the load balancer the load balancer routes the request to the node 1 now you may get a question why this load balancer is still routing to node 1 this is something you need to understand when you are doing queues process still your new request will be routed to the node 1 but what it does is as soon as you get a new request during the queues process load balancer still routes to node 1 because the node is not removed from the load balancer but since the state is already queued what it does is it needs to activate right for sure because in the previous step we passivated so it activates the requester process the request send something back and then again passivate the request so active passive it will happen within seconds so it means it will go into memory do some processing come back to the persistent storage until shutdown sequence is executed so it means even though queues is completed if there are some records coming in the node is still going to serve until the server is shut down okay once that shut down is completed then the load balancer is going to update and make the node one as offline so when some server is made offline into the load balancer definitely the traffic is not going to come to the same server okay so this is on the post queues request before load balancer is updated so what happens after load balancer update let's check the same scenario same client is making another request now the sticky node is gone because till then sticky sessions was enabled right that is why the load balancer was routing to the same server the node 1 now with the j session id load balancer need to route the request to node 1 but node 1 is not available so what load balancer is going to do is it's going to find someone else and it is going to use node 2 so when you are requesting to node 2 this node 2 should activate the requester right because the requester is already passivated into the persistent storage so easily it can be activated and with the db all the servers are acting into the db common db you have so it is easy to activate it so node 2 just activate the requester into their server it means activating also refers to getting all the requester clipboard pages the threads everything into the memory process the request and sends the response till now the node 1 is not completely shut down in the previous picture what we saw is ha manager just requested to remove the node from the load balancer but now when there is no more http request to the queue server then we can say the queue process is completed it means all the active sessions are active in a different server it's all queued it's all migrated then only the shutdown is going to happen and the server is going to be entirely down so this is all about the queuing process okay now how this queuing works is it again comes with out of the box again queuing is not totally with pega it is totally coupled with passivation and it is part of all the java projects so only then you need to have the right classes to trigger all those things okay now let's see how we can trigger this queuing process from the design studio okay first to execute all this high availability action you need to have the high availability manager access group or the high availability administrator access group so you can go to your access group and then try to include the right role just scroll down there you will find high availability administrator and i'm also going to use the queues investigator as well so i'm going to include both the high availability access roles into my current access group so you can also have your own access group called high availability administrator access group and then include your access roles for now this is sufficient for me and then i'm just going to re login again now if i go to configure and then system i see some option called high availability right go to the high availability management and there you see i have only one server of course i am running my local machine you can click here and start the queues process so queues process again it will not be that useful because i don't have any cluster but you can just click okay this is how you can start your queues process so you see the run state it will just change it says queue start I have one active user so if i don't give any more records to the server the run state can be different but you can just try it on your own there is also one more thing i want to show is about the api calls which you can make 
let's go to resources apis let's go to devops you can also see there is some api call through which you can also make a queuing of servers that are not your current server let's say you want to queue a background processing you want to queue a different servers you can just go here and then give the node id and queues you can also roll back or you can also unqueue a node so that the node will be active again and you can accept some request i hope you must have come across this term of rolling restart rolling restart exactly does the same thing what we saw during the queuing so when we do a rolling restart of let's say four nodes first time you will do the queuing and then you will bring one server or one node down from the load balancer restart add it to the load balancer bring another node down so this is how rolling restart works so it always takes lot of time and before ending this i would like to talk about one more thing one important thing actually there are types of queuing available you have slow drain you have immediate drain the main difference between immediate drain and slow drain is immediate drain we just saw in all the pictures we know when we are going to bring down the servers from the load balancer we, so we start the queues process and then we remove the server or node from the load balancer right so that is on the immediate queuing that is the default queuing but you can also use a slow drain queuing so slow drain queuing the difference is first you have to take the server out of the load balancer and then only you will begin the queues process only the order varies so the picture is also going to vary i'm going to give you some link the same documentation link through which you can go through it's just very easy to understand the only difference is that but queuing is going to stay the same you are going to passive it keep it into the permanent storage take it back into a different node that going to stay the same and all my experience i always use the immediate drain and i don't see a very valid reason to use this slow drain so let's say you are into on premise or client managed server and and when you want to do a proper restart i would advise you especially on the web nodes start the queuing process once the queuing is completed and then you can remove the server from the load balancer and then shut down the server i hope this video is informative as well as this module i will see you in the next module oh wait i forgot to show you i just see the queues is completed here see you